strange reason, I usually get to um, talk in front of a lot of people quite often. For some reason, this has been the most nervous I've been for a long time. Uh, I'll explain in a bit. It's really, really cool to be here. Um, I'm a huge fan of Mesh Confab. Um, the last meeting we had or gathering, I was actually sitting, I think, to the corner, to my left, and I was soaking in everything that was going on. Um, so it's cool to be up on stage and hopefully talk to you guys about it. Before I start, first of all, this is not a presentation about YouTube specifically. Um, so usually I have YouTube training sessions every Thursday um, at iSpace and I go into statistics, details, uh, talk about mobile devices and probably the future of it. But this is more about storytelling and why that is relevant to every single one of you. First question, the reason why I was nervous, who am I? I'm looking at a few familiar faces, but most of you probably don't know me. That's fine. Completely cool. Um, and I'm talking about storytelling, so I wanted to show you my story. This was when I first came out here. Um, the last confab had like celebrities. Jaso was here. Uh, Kobna. I forget his last name. He was beatboxing. Um, and then we had, of course, the legendary poet, Chief Moment. These are people who I knew about their story before I came. Or they had some footprint, right? And hopefully when we leave here, I want you guys to be thinking about it. When you leave and somebody who's met you or hasn't met you before, um, hears about your name or hears about you, what story do they leave with? That's my story. All right, so in, in college, one of the classes I took was photojournalism. And one of the things that I took away from my professors was, one of the best ways to tell people about something is to show them. So if I'm gonna stand here and I'm gonna tell you storytelling and about YouTube, I should be showing you my story on YouTube and give you an example of what that did for me. So if you look at that video, that was two years ago, I didn't have a beard, I was a bit younger. But most importantly, um, I hadn't been hired by Google as a project manager. This was just for the Empower Show. It was a crazy idea that we had. I am is an urban hip hop dance hall station. And besides some of the interviews on the morning show, there was no show that we'd had on that allowed entrepreneurs, creatives to come on there and talk. Just share your story, share why it's important, and share how young people can hear about it. So the Empower Show then was, hey, how do we have a conversation like this every week so that people are not just listening to politics or music, but hopefully they're listening to your success story and then they can feel like they can replicate it, right? Um, this video was the number, I probably think, the sole reason why Google hired me. So background, I don't have an engineering degree. I play around with code. When I say play around with code, I Google what the code is, and then I stick it into a content management website. I don't code. Um, I think most of the people who've been hired usually have technical expertise or a graduate degree. How did I get hired? I told my story. So I wanted to show you guys and also build my credibility because telling that the folks here, everybody telling the doctors and the professors in here, everybody day for. At my core, I'm a multimedia journalist. What does that mean? I create content, written, video, photography. Um, I have been awarded for doing so, so it's not me saying I create it. This is to show you that I actually have credibility in what I do. Um, so some of the things I'd share with you would be from my experience, uh, not because, can I cuss? No. Not, not because of shits and giggles, but really because, yes, it's my core competency and, and this is something that I've been passionate about for a long time. Last night, I was thinking about what to share with you guys that would probably inspire you. Everybody has an idea of storytelling. Every time I hear storytelling, I think of By the Fireside, I think of uh, nursery rhymes and other things. But I put together a couple of quotes that probably should help shape your mind what storytelling is. Arabian Nights is a movie, and Tahir Shah is a character in the movie. And, and this quote says, stories are communal currency of humanity. <coughs> so this statement is more with the, what uh, Mr. Al Sayado was talking about, the interspace, thinking about humanity, thinking about it in the macro level versus the one-to-one -one interaction, right? Think about that, communal currency. We're a community of people. Right now it's creatives. But no matter what you are, you find yourself in a community. Old Boys Association, churchgoers, guys, ladies, Ghanaians, victims of Dumsa, we're a community. 
Um, storytelling is a way that we share that what's going on. It's a currency that we use, the currency is for transaction, right? Hannah Arendt, she's a German philosopher. This is more, so my degree is in political science and comparative politics. Lots of reading, lots of perspective. This perspective is actually really cool to me because she says, storytelling reveals meaning without committing the error of defining it. Um, as a creative, you go through your journey. Mine was, at least in writing, was poetry. So per se, I want to express to somebody I like them. If I'm nervous, I'd come up with a cute poem and it would work wonders. And eventually I'd write articles, progressively. Then I started working for a newspaper. Then I became the editor of the newspaper. Started with photography, just for fun, graduation. I started taking pictures for a newspaper. What you find out that as a creative, sometimes you don't want to define something. You want people to have multiple interpretation of the web. And there, there are some mediums that you put out there, like sometimes you go into a museum, you see a picture, and multiple people would have different interpretations of what that picture means to them. Good storytelling has that capability. There's no greater agony than bearing an untold story. I think when Maya Angelou passed away recently, it was reported in media. How many people are familiar with Maya Angelou? Famous poet, civil rights activist. Okay, some of you are not. It's okay. She's a really, really, really vocal, inspirational woman. But I think this quote is, it speaks to everybody. How many stories do we know or do we think of that have not been told yet? The potential of those stories, right? This is the last one, um, and it, it's a bit more idealistic than the other quotes. But uh, after hearing this as I was like, I don't know. I think, especially in our community and what we're doing now, there shouldn't be a, li a limit to the type of idealism that we have. Michael Margolis, he makes a living out of training people to tell their stories and telling them well. So he's the CEO of a company called Get Story. So if you're somebody who's out there, you're trying to do anything, he believes that stories we tell literally make the world. If you want to change the world, you need to change your story. This truth applies to both individuals and institutions. I think about it, that's actually plenty grammar. But where does this make the most sense? And I was thinking about it, and it, it, where it hit me most was, I think somebody asked a question about post-colonialism and all of that, and it hit me. How many of us know, besides Yasantwa, besides some of the Asante stories that we've had about the history of people living or residing here before it was Ghana? Or how many people know about Songhai or Mali empires? Or even better yet, how many people are writing cartoons or creating movies about Songhai, Mali, Ghana empires? So let that sink in. If we want to change the world, we need to start changing our stories. All right, to the fun stuff. That was the deep stuff so that I could at least you people know that I'm on the same page. How many of you guys can recognize what this is, image is? Okay, in the back, yell it out, yeah? Lion King, yes. I think that's the first VHS. For those of you who don't know VHS, you're, you're addicted to streaming live video. It's a big cassette, but instead of going into a, a tape, it goes into a, a little device that's connected to your TV, and you press play. At that time, that was the first VHS that I owned. And it was funny, it was amazing, because it was like, it had, all kinds of interesting songs. It was branded with Africa. It, was, it had animals that could speak. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I was really excited. Um, one of the things I like about this story, though, or this particular movie is, it had so many lessons. The amount of research that went into making this story is enormous. But to date, most of us who were in that era, if you ask people what was the most memorable cartoon animation that they watched, Odds are Lion King would come up. Um, the, the themes between legacy from father to son, responsibility, all these lessons transcend through this cartoon. More importantly, especially in the creative space and when people talk about sustainability, hugely successful mo movie, especially at this time. It was released in 1994. That's what, 20-something years ago. Tell we grow. All of you who recognize this, that's how far back it is, right? 
But this also tells me something. For those who recognize this, that's the legacy of a good story. A good writer somewhere thought it up. Whether it's truly African or not, they came up with a good story that I'm now in Accra, and I'm talking to you about it when it was created continents away. Next slide. A bit more localized. How many of you guys recognize these images? <laughs> See, I did hear about Patti. Very cool. Yes, Pusha, Ajitana. She was my first celebrity crush. I was like, oh, Anybody recognize her? Yes. Nobody? It's a bit dark, isn't it? Masha. From Things We Do For Love. So, these were stories that I remember. If you ask me fondly what Definitely Lion King, Things We Do For Love was by far the most popular, I think, adolescent series that we all experienced. Not only was it successful in our minds, but that was the first breakout role for people like Jackie Apia, Ajay Tiana, Majid Michael. Out of those three, probably most of the awards that have been given out in Africa, they've received one or the other. Supporting role, main role, supporting actress, main actress. That's the importance of a good story. So, compared to Lion King, let's see how things we do for love now. What's the legacy? It's very difficult for you to find things we do for love unless your homeboy has it on a hard drive somewhere. <laughs> Unfortunately, unlike a lot of the soap operas, I call them Las Padres, they're not rerunning, they're not playing back. So the lessons that, that we're supposed to learn from the series, people don't get that anymore. If you go online, and I, this was this morning, because I wanted to make sure it was the most recent search in case somebody adds something, but this is it. There are about three or four different posts, things we do for love, the most prominent one being Wikipedia. And when you go to Wikipedia, the first thing it says is, this article has multiple issues. Please help improve it. <laughs> or discuss these issues on the talk page. I was thinking to myself, I'm here and I can rattle off Zazu, I can rattle off Mufasa, Ska. Yes, I can rattle off some of the characters from things we do for love, but what's the legacy of the story? How, how is that living on? <sighs> okay, so this is where I put out some of my credits. Like, when I was younger, I had an aunt in the UK, and she used to send candy and toffees, and she used to send comic books. So at a young age, I'd get these cartoons over, I'd, just, I'd put a, a paper over them, A4, and I'd try and trace some of them, right? I was one of those people. Mm. Even if it's that that people I like. I searched, and this is the first ever Avengers comic. First ever, 1963. Um, this segment of my presentation, I want you to understand that you should not despise humble beginnings of a story. 1963. 1963, I'd say probably Bosad Ado, Bosad Ado and somebody else. Most of us were not born. Most of us were not. Maybe our parents hadn't even met then. That's how far back it is, right? The other thing about it is, look at the graphics. Carefully, look at the cover. And look at how it started. Some of the characters, look at Iron Man. It, didn't look, it looked like a man coated in iron. It wasn't anything sexy, it wasn't anything, but it's evolved, right? I did another search for what Avengers looks like now. And the power of that story. I'll take it back a bit. For those of you in the comic industry, a lot of times, especially in the 60s and 70s, because there weren't that many mediums to share stories, people took to drawing characters and adding storylines. Marvel wasn't the only studio. I think Marvel and DC were the competing two big ones that came over to me in Ghana, so I, I, I was a fan of both. Those of you who've probably seen Batman, Superman, there's another, hey, that that big boys. There's another, <laughs> there's a whole other category of people on there. But back in the day when you started drawing cartoons, you weren't really making that much money. It wasn't a professional job. You weren't going to get a billion dollar signing or 20 million for acting in a comic book character. And what I want to challenge you guys now is, we might be in the comic era, but what stories are we starting to write so that they will be 
they'll be the ones that in the next 20, 30 years, actually it will be sooner because of the technological revolution, but in the next couple of years would spread across so that somebody in Hawaii is giving a presentation on storytelling on YouTube, and guess what they'll be seeing instead? Sure. Our characters. Next slide, this is a question. And I want you guys to throw out answers at me. Where are our Ghanaian superheroes? We are creators, right? We can challenge, right? We spend time thinking, right? Where are our heroes? The reason why I even picked Avengers, they're not real heroes. Think about that. Let that sink in. Every time we talk about Ghanaian superheroes, oh, Yasantwa, oh, Akokoli, these are literally historical figures. And it's amazing what we're doing with them. Shout out to Francis, that's you. But then our imagination should not be limited to just reality. Ant-Man, some of the characters have the dumbest things ever. I'll be honest with you, there's a Captain America and there's a Captain UK. Google it. Or Captain Britain, I think. For what? But they have it, because there's a creative space and people are allowed to dream and dare and to put it out there. I want to ask you, where are our heroes? Where do they come from? Where are they going to be? Luckily, all is not lost. Next slide. I do what I normally do, out of habit. I put a Google search, Ghanaian superheroes. Guess what I saw? You guys are looking at it, right? Are you guys excited? No. No? No. So at least something shows up. Eddie Ram and the crew, Letty Games now, Letty Arts trying to rebrand certain things. Anansi, all kinds of different characters, Pharaoh, all these things that are, well, are related or can connected to what is being African. It's one company, is that it? A whole country, that's all we've got. And the sad thing about it was, one, two, three, four, five, the fifth image. That was an image we created for the a power show. And I thought, this is the image that Google's going to give me about Ghana's superheroes. That's, that's it. With the creative minds that we have, that can be our digital legacy. Now we get into YouTube. Probably this is the part you guys are excited about. This is what I was built for, YouTube experts. Um, I'll do a couple of breakdowns. First of all, explain what YouTube is. Largest video sharing platform in the world. Bought by Google, managed and owned by Google. It's free for you to upload your videos, and it's free, free for you to watch. There's a new feature that might come out towards the end of the year for paid subscription for certain channels. But for now, it's free for you to watch all content on YouTube, and free for you to upload on there as well. I put this on there because I was looking, we call them beacons. Who are the people with YouTube channels that are exciting, and every time somebody says, oh, this is, this is our YouTube channel, go check it out on YouTube. Um, a quick disclaimer on this slide, YouTube is huge for entertain entertainment and movies, so I, I excluded that completely. Um, by and large, how South Korea's music would get to outside of Ghana, especially when you don't have radio waves or TV like Foresight or other channels, is through YouTube. Um, like an example of how get people get to see or hear about Nigerian movies is also YouTube, so it's a different category. What I wanted to focus on was original content, shorts, comedies, series, animations. We don't have that many. Nicole was here for the Kafab last time and she was talking about an African city. And it's funny, because so many things connect. Um, as Aisha was talking about what she felt empowered her, Aisha Yensu, Christy Brown, she mentioned Sex in a City, which is Yes, yeah, a foreign show. I think it's flawed. I think it's, I watch it for the comedic aspect of it. I think they're silly, and I enjoy watching their silliness. But some people get inspired by it. And the funny thing is, Nicole was also inspired by the TV show Sex in the City, and she decided to create an African version, an African city. And it's in such high demand. She's working on season, I think, three? Oh, season two. Yes, she's working on season two. She had a cast call telling the place was packed. 
Boy Casa. How many of you guys have seen it? How many of you guys have seen his new movie, Calibos in China? Oh, people are not supporting. Why wouldn't I find <laughs> just letty eyes when I look for Ghanaian superheroes? But Boys Casa is another, it really started, to be fair, it didn't start on YouTube. It started, Kofa Studio started on WhatsApp. And nafty kids, well now they're grown men, made videos, short short videos, sent it on WhatsApp. There was a lot of demand. We started putting it on YouTube, optimized the YouTube. And for a while everybody was excited because they were waiting for the next Boys Casa episode. Then the next step, a brand that wanted to connect with the excitement people have for Boys Casa, Airtel signed a contract with them. So now, even though Airtel, technically on rankings, MTN is the widest reach, Vodafone has credibility in terms of online and broadband, but Airtel keeps popping up. And that's what a good or powerful story can do for a brand. That's just one brand. And they're, they're not done. And this is one of the main projects that Kofus has done. Also goes to tell you the power of storytelling. I found XOXO, XOXO is not an official beacon, but I found them because they were trying to do something like things we do for love. Um, they had a different model, try to have it on TV and include a lot of text options so you can decide what the resulting episode would be once you texted somebody. I thought that's innovative. So we, we shoot a video together, let's say Mecca and I are dating, and you want to know whether, or you get to choose whether I break up with Mecca or we get married. Interactive storytelling. There's nothing wrong with being innovative, even within our storytelling. Next slide, please. There's another video. <clears throat> yeah. I want to show this video three reasons. The first one, um, we're on Ivory Coast, and it was a group of digital influencers. So think of people like Amea Debra, um, that have a large following across. There are people, and so the best or most influential digital influencers from Senegal, Cameroon, Ivory Coast, Ghana, Nigeria. And the question I asked, I had a presentation on YouTube, I asked them to all show me one YouTube video that represented their country's music. I was cheating because I'd already kind of seen this, right? But I asked them, and I brought the whole playlist. The Senegalese were like, no, 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 play the next song. This is also really good. The reason why I put this up there is, this is one of the few videos that I've seen that is taking something that we can connect with and has not just visually, but even with sound, which is important with video, the intelligence and how they, they make a mashup, which is really pleasing. So it sounds like something completely new, but it's off of songs that we can relate to. Um, Joseph Akwesi, the director, met with him. He's just like us. You know, good, yeah. He's not on any media. He's not any of the legends, he's not famous people. He didn't shoot 4K camera, he didn't use red, he didn't use anything that seems really big. He used a DSLR camera. So, Melon, can you wave it up? Something like that. Probably a camera that's in front of Melon, but probably a lower quality camera than that. Everything was shot at one place. Adama's house. Oh, well, her dad's house. <laughs> Same setup. Those of you who are photography inclined, the gels, the lighting, and everything else, they played around with it. But if you look at it, it was in post-production and editing that they used filters to create, or give the impression that different eras. Other things that they did, simple but ingenious, three different mics. One of them was, you could recognize, the concatenated tin milk with wood. Those are our stories. We can relate to it. You can relate to playing with wood with a tin can. So it made me wonder. This video was put up, I think, about a month ago? It's not been too long. Yeah, it's been put up about a month ago. It's making a lot of noise. Um, Adoma had a chance to open up for Legends um, an event, the Legends Ball or Legends concert. Yes, um, recently. And before then, who had heard of her? Maybe her friends. She's done, she's done some modeling stuff, but before she put out this video, a lot of us didn't really know who she was. On YFM for Afropolitan Mix, Quaps plays her song all the time. He doesn't know her. It's not her song from YouTube. So it made me ask, why don't we have more digital content? Because when we have digital content, even if it's music, video, whatever content it is, it transcends our boundaries. 
It becomes global very quickly. People can talk about it and instantaneously have access. Like we're having a conversation about it in Ivory Coast and I'll say, Quay. I just showed them out. This is the last video, I promise. We're almost done. Anybody guess how many views this video has had so far on YouTube? 1.3 million. That's my song. So a lot of times, we're empowered by what we know. You can check it out. His YouTube channel is Clifford Owusu. You saw Nana Parting calling him. He's definitely Ghanaian. <laughs> I'm not showing you somebody who's not from this country. I'm not showing you something that's not localized. A lot of times when people talk about Google, YouTube, other things, try and give you this, oh, broke you picture of somewhere where it's not us or individuals who are not us. Clifford Owusu. So I want to change or disabuse your mind that good stories need to have a huge budget or need to have, you need to have Hollywood type team to make something that's impressive. Or you need, a, you need to hire a whole studio. You can do it in front of your house. What next? Um, one of the things that I, I've become wary of, especially partly because I'm on a radio show, is you have a conversation, you talk, you talk, and you keep talking. For me, the most important thing is what next? And it's funny. Because um, when Mr. Joe Sayado was talking, the biggest thing that I took away from everything else, uh, architecture was good, open space, night market, there was food, he said, collaborate. Of all the barriers that you are talking about to creating your story, to sharing it online, the one thing that can help you solve that is collaboration. I don't know why we're not collaborating more. In this room, I see animators, photographers, videographers, makeup artists, fashion designers, what is stopping you? Questions? Thank you very much.